Hey everyone, so it's Hearth and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, we're going to be talking all about house cleansing without smoke. So this is the second video in my house cleansing videos. If you want to know more about what cleansing is, why you might do it, and also how to house cleanse with smoke, I would recommend watching the first video in this series. I will link it up here and also down in the description box if you haven't watched that, and you would like a little bit more information about the more traditional forms of house cleansing. There are, however, a lot of people out there who, for one reason or another, whether you live in rented accommodation or you have asthma and pets, simply can't burn things. They can't have candles or they can't use smoke. And so this video is for all of you out there who maybe don't want to burn things or can't burn things. Whether it's because you're in the broom closet and you don't want people to know about your magical and spiritual practice, or whether it's because you have cats or rabbits or rodents or fur babies or bird babies or reptile babies or amphibian babies, the list goes on that you simply can't burn things around. So today is for all of you guys out there who can't burn things and how you can cleanse your house without having to burn things. So this list is quite extensive. There is a lot on here. So I will do my best to put timestamps down in the description box if you are wanting to learn a little bit more about a very specific type of non-smoke cleansing. But otherwise, buckle up, get a cup of tea, get a hot chocolate, or just a, a mug of water, let's face it, I think we all need to drink more water. And let's go through the methods of house cleansing without smoke. So when it comes to smoke-free cleansing techniques, the successfulness of each technique is very much going to vary. Some of these techniques can be done once a month and can be really successful. Other techniques need to be done every single day consistently for them to maintain that energy and to assist in clearing long term. And some of these techniques you might want to double up on. So just as you might with your skincare routine, you might want to double cleanse, especially if you are using two of the more smaller techniques that maybe aren't so good at shifting energy and clearing it out. You you might want to double up on them to really have a successful cleanse, whereas some of them you can definitely just do them by themselves. It's really a case of playing around with different techniques, seeing what works for you and your environment, because just with everything else within magical practice, it's really all dependent on your current situation, where you live, the environment that you live, and the kind of people that come and go from your property are really going to alter the type of technique that you're going to need. Now these techniques are particularly good for dislodging energy, which is really the first step in cleansing. You dislodge it and then you can remove it. So it's really good to work alongside other techniques and if you are planning on doing a smoke cleanse, these techniques are really good to do first to help to dislodge that energy and then do the smoke cleanse to help clear it out of the property. But if you can't smoke cleanse, that's fine too. You can simply use multiple of these techniques together to really get a successful cleanse regardless of your home environment. For a lot of the techniques that I'm going to be talking about, there's going to be multiple different ways of using them. Some of them are going to be active, some of them are going to be passive. So depending on your current situation and how much you can put into cleansing, you can really choose whether you want to actively participate in cleansing or whether you want to allow the items to passively cleanse for you, which makes it really good if you do have disabilities or you don't have the energy to maintain long cleanses, you can allow things to passively cleanse for you. And when there are active and passive methods, I will let you know so you can decide which one is more suitable for you and your personal environment. Let's start with probably one of the most well-known cleansers in the world and that is salt. Now straight away I am going to put a disclaimer here that please be careful with salt. A lot of people do believe that it won't do any harm but it definitely can. Please never put salt on the earth as it can really damage it and stop anything from growing there in the future. Please also be careful with salt inside. Don't let your fur babies, pets, reptile babies, whatever you might have, get into salt because there's a lot of documented cases of animals getting into salt or getting onto Himalayan salt lamps and ending up in really dire conditions. So please make sure to carefully control your animals and your salt if you are putting them together in a property or simply use a different technique so that you aren't potentially hurting your animal babies. Okay, disclaimer out of the way, let's talk about salt for cleansing. So salt is a really good passive cleanser. Essentially, it draws in the negative energy for you. So rather than pushing it away, salt actually draws it in, which makes it really good to keep around to draw in any of that volatile, unnecessary energy that you might wanna get rid of. Now there are lots of different ways to use salt, but let's start with passive cleansing. 
So passive salt cleansing is often done by putting salt in dishes in liminal places or places where there's a lot of energy coming and going. So oftentimes people will use this in shops or in offices, but if you do have a home that is very turbulent, salt can be really good to be present in every single room, or you can just place it in liminal places, the in-betweens such as Door frames, window sills, and mirrors are really good to put salt near or around. Personally, I really enjoy using small egg cups or shot glasses. I know classy is the exact definition for me using shot glasses for cleansing, but they work. You don't need a huge amount of salt as long as you change it out regularly. You can use standard salt by itself. So you can use rock salt, sea salt, Himalayan salt, whichever one works best for you and whichever you have access to. You can also use things like black salt which is incredibly powerful for drawing in and disrupting energies because of its charcoal content and then you can also use salt with herbs mixed in it so you can add in herbs that are associated with cleansing and use it that way as well. These dishes placed in liminal locations or in areas with a lot of turbulent energy should really be changed every week or so. I will often dissolve the salt in water before tipping it down the drain to really get rid of it out of the property and then I will replace replenish the salt again. Because salt does draw that energy into itself, if it isn't replenished frequently, you do often find that it becomes stagnant and ultimately it can't do its job anymore. So I've seen a lot of people not change out salt frequently enough. And if you are finding that the negative energy or just the excess energy is building up within a space, you might want to switch out the salt, switch out your cleansing method and see if that helps. Because especially things like salt and crystals, they will draw in that energy. And if you don't cleanse them or replenish them, you'll often find that they stop doing their job. If you're finding that there's a whole lot of negative energy in that space, you might wanna start by replenishing the salt every single day for a week and then have the salt sitting out for an entire week and then replenishing it every single week. That way you really disrupt a lot of the energy in that first week and really help to absorb it in. And then from that point on, you're only dealing with the excess energy that's coming in after that initial cleanse. Now this is really good just to do generally. If you've done a smoke cleanse and you would like to maintain that cleanse for longer, you can do it by having salt dishes in liminal places. I really enjoy windowsills for this. I mean, it's literally a shelf. So it's really convenient for putting stuff on. And then I only use a small amount, just a small section in the bottom of a shot glass or an egg cup. And then I will just replenish it every single week. Now, another technique that a lot of people do have already are Himalayan salt lamps or salt lamps in general. Now, salt lamps are really good for mixing up the energy in a space. Essentially, they stop energy from stagnating, which is why when you have Himalayan salt lamps in rooms, you'll often find that they feel quite bright and lively. They stop the energy from stagnating. Now, that doesn't mean that the energy is actually being cleansed out of a space, but you'll often find that the negative emotions and the negative feelings that you might have in a room with stagnant energy is not present if you have a Himalayan salt lamp going. So it can be really good to stop the stagnant energy from settling and then you can cleanse it out. So that's another technique that a lot of people can do if they already have salt lamps. Now, when it comes to active cleansing with salt, there are so many options. A lot of them are incorporated into other categories, but a large one that you can do with salt, especially if you have carpets, is you can do what's known as a salt sweep. The idea behind this is that you take salt, usually relatively finely grained, and you sprinkle it around any carpeted areas. You leave it for an hour to absorb any of that negativity, and then you vacuum up your carpet. So essentially you are drawing all of that salt and all of the energy that has attached itself onto it into your vacuum cleaner that you can then dispose of safely. Now, when it comes to this technique, you can really take it a whole step further. Some people will mix salt into bicarb with herbs, and do it that way. Some people will mix salt with finely ground herbs associated with cleansing and do it that way. You don't have to do this on carpeted floor either. You can do it on hard floor. They're often referred to as cleansing sweeps and they are often used with salt in them, which is why I've put them in this section. Although as you will see, there's a whole lot of crossover between the different sections. But those are the main uses of salt that I really enjoy. Personally, I like the really passive forms of cleansing with salt because it's very easy, very convenient, and most people are able to do it quite safely and effectively, regardless of their personal circumstances. So next up, we 
have loose incense and resins. Now, I know what you might be thinking. Hearth, incense and resin, that requires fire and that requires smoke, but it doesn't have to. There are a few ways that you can use it, both passively and actively, that don't necessarily require fire or smoke, which can make them really good if you already have these items and you currently can't use them, or maybe you're in a location where you're not allowed to use smoke or candles. So let's start passively. Passively, these items can be used much like salt. They are often used to disrupt the energy within a space and they can also force it away. So whereas salt will often draw energy into itself and contain it, these herbs that are designed to banish and cleanse are often designed to push the energy away from themselves. And so you can use small dishes of these loose incenses, these loose powders, or these resins to assist in disrupting and pushing away that energy. So you can use it much like salt on windowsills in liminal places. You can also use it as almost a kind of pot potpourri where you do keep it in a container for its fragrance and you just have it casually sitting around to help disrupt that energy. You can have it in bags and hang it around your clothes and your items in your room. You can hang it by your bed to stop bad dreams. You can also carry it around with you in small pouches or you can work it actively. Now the active way of working with these incenses and resins is to use what's known as an incense warmer or a wax or oil heater. Now these things can either be electric or they can be powered by candles. The technique that you use is really going to depend on your current circumstances, but essentially rather than burning these items, you heat them up so that the fragrance and the energy is released without having the smoke. And this makes them really useful. I used to do this when I was at university because I couldn't burn anything, but I had an electric wax melter. And so I would use that instead. Now, if you are planning on using anything electric or anything with fire, please make sure that you always take care. Do not leave them unattended and make sure that you are being very cautious with them. But especially the incense warmers, these are specifically designed for loose and resin incense to allow you to release the fragrance without the smoke, which makes them really effective for anyone that does have asthma, any other breathing conditions or pets that they don't want to interrupt. So that's how you can use incense and resin without necessarily using smoke. And that's a good technique if you do already have these items and you don't want to waste them, but you don't know how to use them in a way that's effective for you. So next up, we have essential oils and botanical oils. So things such as spell oils. These are herbal oils that are infused in a base oil and also essential oils, which are the exceptionally concentrated distilled oil. Now there are lots of techniques for these. The active technique is very similar to incense and resin, which is why I've put them next to one another. You essentially use an oil warmer to diffuse the energy and the fragrance of these oils in a space to assist in disrupting and cleansing an area. This is particularly good if you do use essential or botanical oils that are designed for cleansing purposes or a singular herbal oil that is based off a herb that's used for cleansing. So things like garden sage or rosemary or mugwort, something that will really help to disrupt and cleanse the energy in that particular area. So once again, these can be done on electric oil warmers or candle lit oil warmers. And of course, always be cautious no matter what you're using. Please make sure that the oil that you're using isn't going to negatively impact you because even though the oil is in the air, if it is something that you can't tolerate, whether you are pregnant, whether you are breastfeeding, whether you have health conditions, it will still interact with you even if you aren't directly consuming it. So please be cautious and if you are using essential oils in an oil warmer, please make sure that you dilute them. It's about 10% oil to base oil if you are using essential oils for aromatherapy purposes. If you are planning on putting it on your skin, it's even lower. It's about 2%, 1% to 2% depending on the oil. So that's an active way of doing it. And this is ideal. You can move it room to room so that you can cleanse each space individually, but you can also have them being used passively. Now it's really common nowadays to see essential oil diffusers for cars. I have one that's in my bathroom of all places, my bathroom. And in there I put patchouli oil because I love the smell of dirt. Anyone has smelt patchouli oil, you'll know exactly what I mean. It literally smells like fresh, damp dirt 
And if that isn't the most witchy fragrance on earth, I don't know what is. But you can use these for lots of purposes. You can hang them in vehicles to help add essential oil fragrance and also properties into your car. You can also keep them in your home, which makes them ideal for cleansing. If you add in a cleansing blend of essential oils or you add in an essential oil with a specific property for cleansing, you can then have it diffuse that oil naturally and gently as fragrance within your space. It's also really useful if you live in a place where you don't want to be outed as practicing witchcraft or being part of a tradition that does involve cleansing within it because they are just pretty smelling car diffusers. Like it's a pretty passive thing to have. And these can then be moved from room to room if you do want to cleanse individual spaces. So that's a really useful way of cleansing a space. I would recommend doing it alongside other cleansing. So maybe using oils alongside salt or incense alongside salt and blending them together to really get a successful all round cleanse. Up next are crystals. Now crystals are probably one of the easiest forms of cleansing that you can do. And essentially all cleansing with crystals is passive. You're just allowing it to do its job. Now there are a few crystals that I really enjoy using for this. Primarily I will use black tourmaline. That is my go-to, specifically rough black tourmaline, but tumbled works just as well. You can also use smoky quartz and obsidian, but for me, it's always going to be black tourmaline. I enjoy putting these in the liminal places. Now much like salt, crystals draw that negative energy into itself. It absorbs it. And that means that you are going to have to find a technique to cleanse the crystal that's doing the cleansing for you, which is a little bit of the downside of using stones, but I adore using them alongside other forms of cleansing to maintain it. Now for me, I often put these in liminal spaces once again. So over mirrors, over door frames, window sills. I find that over door frames is really effective because not many people look up. When was the last time you went through a door in your house and you looked at the door frame? Don't think very many people do unless you're really, really tall and you're scared you might hit it. But generally speaking, there's a little strip above the door frame that you can sit small, narrow crystals on. And I do this a lot with black tourmaline. Now I'd say every single month, maybe earlier, depending on how cluttered the energy is in your house, you might want to switch out the crystals or take them down, cleanse them, and then put them back up again. But this is a really good passive technique. It's great if all you have to work with are stones. And it's also really great if you want to work alongside other means and you want to use this as just a way of maintaining that clear cleansed calm energy so moving on to sound now sound is probably one of the most popular forms of smoke free cleansing a lot of traditions do use it and the type of sound cleansing that you're going to do is really going to depend on the tradition that you follow now first let's start with passive techniques now when it comes to cleansing probably one of the most passive techniques is to use vibrational free frequencies. Now these can very easily be found online. YouTube has a lot of different ones out there that you can use for cleansing. I'll link some of them down in the description box if you would like to use them. So if you don't have any instruments yourself or you don't have the mobility or the ability to do it yourself, you are able to essentially blast through speakers some of these vibrational frequencies which really help to dislodge any of that energy. I don't know if anyone has seen it, but there are videos out there of people cleaning with vibrational frequencies. So you'll often see jewelers doing it. They will put it in a solution and then they will essentially vibrate that solution really, really quickly. And it just dislodges all of the dirt in a piece of jewelry. It's amazing. And once you start watching them, you actually can't stop. I think I spent like an hour the other day just watching jewelers clean rings using this technique. It is so cool. And that is essentially what you're doing with these vibrational frequencies. You turn the volume up high enough and you can feel the vibrations as they go through you. And if you can feel these vibrations, everything else can feel the vibrations too. And you're essentially dislodging everything that's hidden away in little dark corners where you can't reach typically, the energy that's stagnating around the space, you're vibrating that into the main body of the room, which can then be cleared out. So these can essentially be played on Bluetooth speakers if you have them, just to really help vibrate that energy out so you can really declutter it. And then you can move the speakers or the device around the property so that you can really cleanse that way. Now, when doing this, I typically always say go top to bottom, back to front. So that way you're not letting any of the nasty little bits of energy get back in again. But that is obviously going to depend on your style of house. And in the last video, I spoke about how to get around different versions of houses and different layouts. 
Now there's lots of active ways to cleanse with sound as well. One of my most popular is using bells. Now I love bells, they're so satisfying to use. I will use like a little hand bell. It is so nice and I will do the same. I will start at the back of the top of the house and I will move to the front and then I'll go down the stairs and move back to front and out the front door. And that is how I will do it. And I'm ringing this bell into all of the corners to dislodge the energy and really annoy it. This is how I like to view sound cleansing is I like to really piss off the energy and any minor spirits that might just not want to get out and you just annoy them enough and they will leave. I mean, they might come back again, but that is where protections come in. And you should always put protections up after you've done your cleansings so that what you've sent out doesn't immediately come straight back in. So you can use bells, you can clap. That's another good one. If you're really good at loud clapping, I am, I'm particularly good at loud clapping. It's like an annoying secret ability. I can just deafen myself with my own claps. And by doing this, you're doing a similar thing. You are essentially dislodging the energy that you can then drive out. People do also use singing bowls as well. Some people use the little Tibetan bells. I personally don't necessarily use them. I typically just stick to standard hand bell, but that's because it's easy. It's easy and they're really easy to find in the UK as well, which is really useful. So those are just a few of the techniques that you can use. You can also use your voice. There are certain vibrational frequencies that you can use, which you can feel go through you and you can use these. I do this quite a lot. There's one, I'm not going to do it on here because that's embarrassing, but there's one note that literally vibrates everything. Like you can, you feel it in yourself. And if you go around your property and if you find a note or a pitch that particularly feels that way for you, it's going to vary person to person. You can then use that to help vibrate the energy around the property as well. So whether you have items or not, that is definitely something that you can do. And is probably why sound cleansing is one of the most popular techniques of smoke-free cleansing out there because Anyone can find something on YouTube and use that as a vibrational frequency, or you can create the sounds yourself. And I think if you are getting into spiritual practice and witchcraft, don't rely on external things. You know, if you can find a vibrational frequency sound that you can create, try and create it. If you can clap, see if that works for you. Play around with the things that you can do without having other items, because that can really set you up in the future for if you really need to cleanse and you don't have items, you're not reliant on items. They're a bonus, not a necessity. So next up, we have washing. Now, washing is a really old school technique. The idea being that you both physically clean and spiritually wash all at the same time. Now, there is really no passive way to physically wash something. Because if you're gonna wash it, you really need to be getting your hands dirty. So this one doesn't really have any passive options. But there are lots of techniques that you can use depending on your tradition, your background, and what you have access to. So one of the most common ways of creating a wash is to use some form of sacred water. Now the type of sacred water is gonna really depend on your background. Some people will use holy water, other people will use spring water, or they might use moon water. It really depends on your religious and spiritual background. The idea being that when you are creating a bucket of soapy water that you are gonna be washing a floor with, you can add in these spiritual waters to assist in spiritually cleaning while you are physically cleaning as well. And this is one thing that a lot of people do use moon water for is that they do use it as a cleansing agent within their spiritual and physical washes so that they can physically clean and spiritually wash all at the same time. It's really quite convenient. Some people do take it a whole step further and they will create a steeped liquid. Oftentimes in advance, you will simmer herbs and plants together in a small volume of water so that it becomes exceptionally concentrated. People will often do this with lemons, with rosemary, with sage, and they will essentially brew it almost like tea into a very concentrated liquid. They will then strain out any of the plant matter and then they tip that remaining liquid into their bucket of water with the soap in it so that you get the agents and the cleansing properties of the plants and you also get the physical cleaning of the soap that's within the bucket as well. So that is another technique that people use. Now, when this is done, you typically clean the house top to bottom, back to front. The same typically applies when you're doing these kind of cleanings and cleansings. So if you are cleaning a kitchen and you do have a back door in the kitchen, you'll often go from the furthest point away from the back door towards the back door. Same applies for bathrooms. You'll often go furthest away from the door towards the door and then lead it out 
of the house. Now this is super convenient if you live in a terraced house like I do because kitchen and bathroom are right next to one another right by the back door which makes it really convenient. It's a little bit trickier if you do have like an interior bathroom that's like a room in the body of the house. That's a little bit more tricky and in which case you might want to go from the furthest point away from the window towards the window and do it that way. And then typically when you are done with that washing water that you have used for surfaces or window sills, these are really good for cleaning mirrors, window sills, those kind of things, liminal places. A lot of people will also wash down doors with these liquids as well because it's another liminal place. Once all of that is done, you will often take the liquid and you will tip it away outside. Now typically down an outside drain, some traditions also throw liquids in certain directions depending on the background of that tradition. But as a general rule of thumb, you're going to want to tip that liquid in a drain outside because if you are doing a spiritual cleansing, you're not necessarily going to want to be tipping it down an interior drain because you are very much keeping some of that energy inside. It's much more frequently done that you will tip it down an outside drain. So I think most houses, especially in the UK, we have an outside drain usually by the back door that a lot of people do use for this purpose. Moving on to sprays. Now sprays are a very new form of spiritual cleansing that has become very, very popular. I make my own sprays for my website and I love using them. They're a really wonderful way of adding fragrance and very directly aiming a cleansing that is in the air. So I think a lot of people really enjoy smoke cleansing because you can very actively move it around a space. You can really direct where that smoke is going as you're doing it. If you're using loose incense in a cauldron, once again, you can really follow around exactly where you need to go. And a lot of people find that to be a little lacking when they start using things like broomsticks, which we will get onto, or sweeps or washes or essential oils. You know, people feel as though that is missing. And I think that's where sprays kind of come in. Essentially sprays are a collection of essential oils, herbal ingredients, crystals, items, that are designed to assist in spiritual cleansing. And they're often used on the person and they can also be used on a space as well. And they're really good as a direct cleansing method that is very discreet. So for most people, it's pretty common to have room sprays, oftentimes in bathrooms or in bedrooms, just to kind of freshen up the air and the atmosphere of a place and to cover up disgusting smells, often used in bathrooms but they're pretty common to have around. And so it's very normal for someone to have a room spray that they really like the fragrance of. So for a lot of people who are hiding their magical and spiritual practice, they will often use room sprays because they are so discreet. You know, for anyone looking, it could simply be a spray that you like the fragrance of, but you know that you are doing your cleansings at the same time, which makes them really useful for anyone that does want to keep their practice more secret. Now you can both make your own spiritual cleansing sprays or you can purchase them. A lot of online stores, a lot of witchcraft and occult shops do carry cleansing sprays in one form or another. It's simply a case of finding a fragrance that you really like. And some companies will do multiple different fragrances of sprays. So I know that myself personally, I like using different fragrances every now and then. So I'll often come out with like seasonal sprays. So I think a lot of companies have many options for you to choose from depending on the kind of fragrances that you actually like, which is super convenient, or you can simply make it yourself. There's a lot of recipes online. It really depends on your level of creativity, how crafty you are, or whether or not you want to make it yourself or support a small business, whichever one suits you better. Now, next up, we have sweeping. Now, I did touch on sweeping a little bit earlier, but this is a really old school practice. It has been documented for a very long time. One of the most common techniques is the use of brushes. Now, this can be done with hand brushes, brooms, broomsticks, or the more ceremonial besoms that we'll often see sold today to magical practitioners for one reason or another. Now, you can do it one of two ways when it comes to using a brush or a besom or a broomstick, those kind of things. You can either physically brush Brush. This is the very traditional technique. When people didn't have vacuum cleaners, they were physically cleaning their home with a broomstick. And you can physically clean your property. Typically you do top to bottom, back to front, whichever way works best for the layout of your home. And you are both cleaning out any of the debris that's in your house and you are also cleansing away any of that energy. Nowadays, when we have more ceremonial broomsticks, you will often use a spiritual cleansing technique where the broomstick itself never touches the floor. It stays about two centimeters, 
by an inch, two inches away from the floor so that you are spiritually cleaning the energy, you are ritually cleaning, but you aren't necessarily physically touching the floor, which is useful if you do live in a home that has carpet because your broom will be very quickly destroyed if you are trying to rake it through carpet or your carpet will get destroyed. It's really a battle of the wills, which will be destroyed first, but it's much harder to use broomsticks and besoms in general on carpeted areas. So it's really gonna depend on where you live and how your house is set up. Personally, I really enjoy just ritually cleaning. I will just go through the house with one of my broomsticks and I will just cleanse out that energy out the front door. And I find that's a really nice way of doing it. I will often do this around springtime because it's the idea of a spring cleanse, spring clean. So I'll often do it then. And it's also nice just to get the windows open, get the doors open, those kind of things. Now you can also incorporate sweeps into this. The idea being that you will sprinkle something down on the floor that is both a physical and a spiritual cleanser that you then sweep away with a broomstick or you can vacuum it up. That is a very modern technique of doing it. There are loads of these that are available on the market generally. So a lot of carpet companies will also produce carpet sweeps that are essentially a mix of bicarbonate, I do believe, and a lot of citrus fragrances and you essentially sprinkle it on a carpet, you leave it for an hour and then you vacuum it up. This is essentially the idea of a sweep. Now this has been done for a long time. It's only really recently that carpet companies have started manufacturing these, but you can make them yourself. There's loads of recipes out there. If I can find some, I'll see if I can link some down in the description box. You can use salt as the base for your sweeps. You can use bicarb. You can then use herbs and powders and items in there. As long as it's safe to vacuum up and it's safe for the pets and animals in your home, it can be a really good way to know where you've been and where you haven't as well. I think when you are vacuuming or you're using a brush, if there isn't a lot of debris on the floor, it can be quite difficult to figure out where you've been and where you haven't. And these sweeps really allow you to figure out exactly where you've been whilst also adding a little bit of extra cleansing oomph into that ritual. And then we're on to the last two. So first up we have water. Now water is one of the oldest forms of cleansing there is. We use it to clean and cleanse ourselves, to clean and cleanse our items, and to clean and cleanse our home. It's one of the most basic forms of cleansing. A very, very simple way of doing this is to use some kind of sacred water. This could be spring water, blessed water, holy water, moon water, whatever it is that you wanna use in a small dish, and you sprinkle it around your home. It's a really, really old school technique for doing this, and it's also really effective as well, especially if you are using some kind of significant water. I like using water from the White Well in Glastonbury. If anyone has some of that water and it's not gone off and gone bad this year, I would recommend giving it a go. It has such nice energy. It's really good for just kind of doing a gentle cleanse. You can also add salt into this water, though I would say, please be careful here if you are sprinkling it onto surfaces like varnished areas and floor, you may find that it damages the surface because that is what salt does. But that is a technique for cleansing spaces and that can also be good for cleansing people as well if you are wanting to do a really quick self-cleanse without necessarily having to wash yourself in the shower or get out a rosemary stick. You know, it's, it's a much quicker and easier method. Now this one does have a passive technique. The idea is very similar to using salt in dishes that we mentioned at the very start of this video. You create salted water and keep it in small glasses and small dishes on windowsills or in liminal places. Similar practice to the original technique, you essentially remove this water every 12 hours to allow it to dislodge and draw in any of that unwanted energy. Now this technique is very commonly done by people who don't necessarily have a lot of salt to work with. It allows you to use a little bit of salt and dilute it with a lot of water and you still get that property and you also get the cleansing property of water and then you can tip it down the drain without having to dilute it any further. You don't have to dissolve it because it's already dissolved which can be a good technique and also is good in shot glasses. Hey, shot glasses are great when it comes to witchcraft. Don't underestimate them. I don't even drink alcohol. No, I might have a sip of mead every now and then, but I don't really drink alcohol. But I have just loads of shot glasses because they're so useful when it comes to witchcraft. And then lastly, the final technique is using light and air. Now this is probably the most basic technique and I've put it at the end of this list because it really is the most basic. If it's all you have available to you, make use of it. But if you are planning on using it and you have other options as well, I would recommend incorporating multiple different techniques together to get a much more powerful cleanse. 
Now, when it comes to spring cleaning and just cleaning in general, you might find parents or grandparents telling you to open up all of the curtains and all of the windows and let the breeze come in. And this is a really old school technique for dislodging any of that stagnant energy. Any parts of a room that are usually in darkness that don't necessarily see the wind or sunlight can really be opened up and that energy can really be dislodged. It's a very simplistic technique, but it's really common that at the end of winter, at the start of spring, you open up all of your windows, you bring up all of the curtains and the blinds, and you just let that breeze and the sunlight come in. And you can really feel a difference. It's not a very intense cleanse, but you can certainly feel the difference when you've done it. I did this just a few days ago. It was really sunny in the UK. And by really sunny, I mean it was like nine degrees Celsius, that is, because we don't use Fahrenheit here. And it was just so nice getting the sunshine and the breeze in. Oh, it was so good. So if that's all you can do, I would recommend giving it a go or using it alongside other techniques. When it comes to cleansing, I would always recommend that you open curtains, open windows, let that breeze in whilst you're doing that cleansing because it also gives an exit point for any of that energy as well. So when it comes to these techniques, use them together, try, mix and match, see what works. Different rooms might require different techniques. If you can cleanse and clean using a liquid soap wash in the kitchen and the bathroom, but you can't in your bedroom, try using maybe sound cleansing in your bedroom or light or water. See what works for different rooms, really mix and match with it. When it comes to smoke-free cleansing, it's really entirely gonna depend on your environment, the layout of your house, whether it's carpeted, hard floor, tile, it's really gonna change how you do it. So play around with them, double up, do a double cleanse if you really want to, or you can mix and match smoke cleansing with smoke-free cleansing. That is a good option as well. I really like to do it. I typically prefer non-smoke cleansing over smoke cleansing, mainly because I don't wanna piss off any of the spirits that don't like smoke in this house. And so if I do want to dislodge any energy without disrupting the spirits, I will typically use smoke-free methods because I know that the spirits will be fine with that, but I get rid of any of that energy that I don't want. So really play around with it, see what works, see what doesn't, give it a go. Check out the description box for any links and any websites that I've pointed you towards that will help with recipes and techniques and those kind of things. And hopefully you enjoyed this video. Once again, if you do wanna learn more about smoke cleansing, I would recommend clicking up here or clicking down in the description box on the video all about house cleansing with smoke because that will give you a little bit more context to see what works best for you. But if you have watched it, I hope that this was a useful second edition. I know that you guys have been asking for it for ages. So if you did enjoy it, feel free to give it a like. It means so much to me. If you do have any questions, comments, concerns, video ideas, or just wanna chit chat, feel free to put it down in the comment section. And I have a question Question for you guys what is your favorite technique of cleansing do you smoke cleanse do you non smoke cleanse do you use water or washes or broomsticks what is it that you use I would absolutely love to know and it can also help give anyone out there more ideas for the things that they can do as well if you do enjoy the magical content on this channel in this video feel free to hit subscribe I do post new magical content every single week a big thank you to all of my patreon supporters your names will be on the end screen in just a moment. If you would like to chat with more people about cleansing, the link to the Discord server is in the description box where you can chit chat with other members of the community. I hope you're all staying safe. I hope you have a marvellous magical day and I will see you in the next video. Bye! I'm nearly at the bottom of the first page. I have four pages. Look at them, them down here. Yay! And I can literally feel a piece of lipstick right there. I can ah and here and here and here and it won't come off this lipstick looks real cool practical wise would not recommend <laughs> does this hair make me look like i have a giant forehead yes do i want to go through the process of fixing that Probably not, so we're gonna have to tolerate a five head. Oh, actually, no, okay, it's still a four head. Is it weird that I'm not wearing green eyeshadow? Is this maybe what's throwing me off? Because I've worn this hair like this in a video before, except I had green eyeshadow, and so it wasn't much of a problem, but now I don't have green eyeshadow on, it feels weird. And also, please excuse the fact that I've broken off both of these two fingers, and then I tried to fix them with a piece of tea bag, and it worked for a while and then I was in the shower and I had that like moment of rage. You know when you're like rubbing your hands through your hair and your hair keeps getting stuck in your nail and I just, ah, I just went, and now I'm missing.
two nails. So we're just gonna have to excuse that, just pretend like you haven't noticed it. And uh, yeah, let's just carry on the video regardless. While I look like Lady from Lady and the Tramp, like this is actually how I feel. Like if I was ever gonna cosplay Lady and the Tramp, this is the exact hair that I would do. Because that is how it makes me feel. Anyway, let's get on with the video. Ooh, I'm on to the next page. Yes. Uh, I think I ate it. I did, I ate it. I ate it. I don't wanna eat it. Yeah. Da, 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 da. Feels super professional with this. I like it. Mm -hmm. 